Although she'd been dead for nearly two months, she'd only been in the canal for a few days. Anne Ballantyne was born in 1966 and grew up in a flat in Warriston Road with her parents Graham and Isabel Ballantyne. She had a younger sister named Grace and a young brother named Alan. Although she was unemployed and lacked professional training, she moved out of the family home and took a small flat of her own at 20 Yemen Place, Dolry, in 1986. She worked as an unpaid volunteer at the Cannon Gate Youth Project looking after disabled youngsters. Money was tight, but her parents helped her to get by. With long black hair, she was a great fan of heavy metal music and used to hang around the venue club in Calton Road, consorting with various rough types from the bike fraternity. In late 1986, she had split up with her boyfriend, Joe Burden, but remained upbeat about her future and looked forward to celebrating Christmas with her family. The last time Isabel Valentine saw her daughter, was on November 17th, 1986. Anne liked to lead an independent life and a somewhat bohemian lifestyle. But when she did not come to the family home for Christmas, her parents knew something was wrong. They visited the flat in Human Place and put letters and some money through the letterbox, asking Anne to phone the family, even if she was skinned. After all, there'd been no response. The Ballantines went to the police who took their concerns seriously picking the lock of the Yemen Place flat. They found everything in good order, but with no signs of a burglary or struggle. A strange assortment of things turned out to be missing from the flat. A black leather jacket, a brass petrol lighter with Anne's initials engraved, a photo album and a black shoulder bag. The police did what they could do in tracking down Anne's friends, but without finding any trace of her. On January 21st, 1987, some workmen spotted the naked body of a young woman floating in the Union Canal. Her hands and feet were tied together. Although the body was badly decomposed, it could be identified as that of Anne Ballantyne through her dental records and through a distinct scar on her head. The police technicians found that Anne had been raped and strangled to death. Although she'd been dead for nearly two months, she'd only been in the canal for a few days. This would indicate that either she'd been murdered in the flat at 20 Human Place, with the body afterwards being moved to some secure location by the killer, or that she'd been murdered somewhere else, presumably in some secure hideout available to the killer, where dead bodies could be stored for weeks and end without risk of discovery. The police searched warehouses, disused garages and derelict buildings, without finding any clue to where Anne's body had been stored. They suspected that the murderer was a man who knew Anne well and found a suspect who was known to the Ballantyne family as a disagreeable person and whose name was mentioned in Anne's diary. A report was sent to the police, but there was insufficient evidence for a prosecution. Another theory is Anne Ballantyne was murdered by a serial killer who took some mementos of her away from the murder flat. It is not known whether Anne prostituted herself on a part-time basis. This would have potentially brought her into contact with some very unsavoury types. Christopher Halliwell murdered two women in 2003 and 2011, but the police suspected that his tally of victims was a good deal higher than that. Many items of women's clothing were found buried with those of his victims, and already in 1985 he had boasted of being a serial killer. Yet nothing connects this Wiltshire-based cab driver with Edinburgh. In 2019, the former detective Chris Clark pointed the finger at the beast of Bramley, John Taylor, a parcel delivery driver based in the outskirts of Leeds, currently serving a life sentence for murdering 16-year-old Leanne Tiernan in 2000. As well as a number of sex attacks, he had nothing to connect him with Edinburgh, although he might have been passing through the capital while going to Glasgow looking for prostitutes. Taylor would have been 30 years old in 1986 had kept the body of his victim in the kitchen freezer for nine months before dumping it. The murder of Anne Ballantyne, one of the greatest mysteries of modern Edinburgh, is unlikely ever to be solved. Although the police investigation is actively pursued, having committed the perfect murder, the killer may still be alive today. <laughs>